is the In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the Divine Will, I enter into the Holy Divine Will. Come, Divine Will, Come beat in my every heartbeat. Come breathe in my every breath. Come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future. In, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary, and Louisa. In, with, and for all. That all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls. Giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come, reign on earth, fiat. The Kingdom of My Divine Will in the Midst of Creatures Book of Heaven, Volume 30, Part 16 June 29, 1932 Prodigies and Secrets that the Living in the Divine Will encloses Moving Scenes Generations of the Divine Acts in the Creature Divine Custody and Jealousy I am in the arms of the Divine Fiat. Its dominion extends in everything over my littleness. But its empire is not slavery, no, but union, transformation, in such a way that the creature feels that she dominates together with it. And by letting herself be dominated, she acquires the virtue of dominating the very supreme will. But while my mind was swimming in the sea of the divine fiat, in such a way that I felt as though drowned by its waves, my celestial Jesus, visiting my poor soul, told me, My blessed daughter, the living in my will encloses so many prodigies and secrets as to astound heaven and earth. You must know that as the littleness of the creature enters into it, it gets lost in its immensity, and the divine will receives it in its arms to make of it a conquest, and the human will makes itself the conqueror of the divine. Now, in these conquests on both sides, the divine will celebrates the conquest of the human, making of it the use it wants. And the human will celebrates the great conquest it made of the divine, and wanting to make of it the use it wants, it sends it off to heaven as its conquest and bearer of new joys and happinesses which it possesses. My will, conquered by the soul, 
does not hold itself back. By locating itself, it stays and sets out for her celestial fatherland, only to comply with the one who has conquered it. And it carries the conquest it made of the human will, and the joys and happinesses that the conquering divine will encloses. My delighting and beatifying will, which is in heaven, and my conquering will, which is on earth, plunge together and flood the celestial regions with the new joys that my conquering divine will possesses. In fact, you must know that the joys of my conquering will are quite distinct and different from those of my delighting will. The conquering joys are not in the power of the blessed, but in the power of the creature, who must send them from the earth. And they are formed in the middle of the stake of pain and of love, and over the annihilation of her own will. On the other hand, the delighting joys are in their power and are fruits and effects of the celestial dwelling in which they find themselves. There is great difference between the joys of my conquering will and those of my delighting will. I can say that my conquering joys do not exist in heaven, but only on earth. And oh, how beautiful it is to see the creature, who, for as many times as she does her acts in my will, so many times makes herself the conqueror of it, and makes it set out for heaven, for purgatory, into the midst of terrestrial creatures, wherever she wants. More so since my will being everywhere and in every place. It has to do nothing other than bilocate itself to give the fruit, the joys, of the new conquest that the creature has made of it. My daughter, there is no scene more moving, more delightful, more useful, than to see the littleness of the creature come into our divine will, do her little acts, and make her sweet conquest of an immense, holy, powerful, eternal will that encloses everything, can do anything, and possesses everything. The littleness of the creature, in seeing herself the conqueror of a divine fiat so interminable, remains stupefied, does not know where to put it, would want to enclose it all within herself. But she lacks the space, and acting as a stalwart, she would want everyone to take so great a good. Here, then, she sends it off to heaven as a sacred right of the celestial fatherland, and to whomever wants it and with eagerness she sets about doing more acts in it, to reacquire it as many times for as many acts as she keeps on doing. It is the true divine commerce that God and the creature form between heaven and earth. Then my mind continues to wander within that fiat that wants to always give itself to the creature. And while it gives, it never stops giving. And my sweet Jesus added, My daughter, the human will is the font and substance of the life of the creature. From it she draws the life of her works, the thoughts of her mind, the variety and multiplicity of her words. If the human life did not have a free will. It would be a life without font 
and without substance. So it would lose all the beauty, the strikingness, the admirable braiding that the human life can weave. The same for the divine will. Wherever it reigns, it makes itself font, substance, and life of the acts done in it. So as the creature thinks, speaks, operates, walks, this font diffuses in her acts and places in them the divine substance. And oh, the variety of these acts, distinct among themselves, in sanctity, in beauty, in light, in love. When this font diffuses in her acts, it does always new acts and forms the harmony of the divine operating in the creature. Now, you must know that all our care is for these acts, because in them is formed the generation of our divine acts in the depth of the creature. And oh, our contentment, for we can continue the generation of our acts. And in this generation, we feel ourselves the God operating, not the God hindered, unable to carry out the generation of our acts, because our will is not there in the creature. So, to our care, adds our custody and jealousy of these acts. Your Jesus remains inside and around the creature in order to keep it in custody. There is a footnote here referring to the word it, it meaning the divine will, in order to keep the divine will in custody. My jealousy has a gaze fixed on them to watch them, to delight myself, and take all the pleasure that the generation of its acts operating in her possesses. After all, our will possesses an infinite value and not keeping even just one act of it in custody would be like going against our very selves. Even more, you must know that since it is font and substance of our Supreme Being, our power, sanctity, goodness, and all our attributes form a crown around our will and all its acts to be dependent upon it, and give it the homage and custody of all its acts, whether it does them in us or in the creature. Therefore be attentive, and let yourself be dominated by my will, if you don't want ever to lose your Jesus, whom you so much long for, love, and want. Fiat. July 9th, 1932. Hunger that the divine will produces. Life imprisonment of love. How God forms the persecution of love to the creature. I feel myself under the empire of the divine will. And if for a few minutes I don't feel its empire, I feel I am without life, without food, without heat. I feel that the divine life ends, because there is no one who forms it, nor anyone who nourishes it. And in my sorrow I keep repeating, Jesus, help me. Without your will I die of hunger. Oh, please, make me feel its sweet empire, so that nourishing me, your life may live in me, and I may live of you. And my beloved Jesus, having pity on me, all love and tenderness, clasped me in his arms and told me, 
my little daughter of my will. Courage, do not lose heart. The divine life, formed and nourished by my will, cannot die. And if you feel the hunger, it is, rather, that you don't always hear my speaking on other wonders and novelties that my will possesses. This interrupted speaking of mine makes you feel hungry for the ever-new nourishment which it possesses. But this prepares you to receive the new nourishment of its knowledges to make you grow and be nourished only of divine will. Nor would you submit to taking any other food. It would be disgusting to you, and you would content yourself with dying of hunger, because one who has savored it many times cannot adapt to taking other nourishments. However, this hunger is also a fortune because it can serve you as an outlet into the celestial fatherland. And you must know that the only nourishment of these divine regions is the new act, never interrupted, of my divine will. This nourishment that possesses all tastes, all delights, is the daily food. And of all instants, of the celestial Jerusalem. And besides, to feel the hunger says life, not death. Therefore, wait with unconquered patience for the nourishment of my will, which shall repay you for the hunger suffered with such abundance that you shall not be able to take it all. And I, interrupting the speaking of Jesus, said, My love, my heart bleeds in telling you this. To me, rather, it seems that you no longer have that continued love for me that would make you always speak, and giving me many new enchanting surprises of your being and of your will. I would feel and touch with my own hand your love palpitating for me. So much so that I was forced to say, How much Jesus loves me! Now, because of this interrupted speaking of yours, it seems to me that I am not always loved by you. And to pass from a continuous love to an interrupted love is the harshest of torments. And I keep repeating, I am not loved. I am not loved by he whom I so much love. And Jesus, interrupting my speaking, added, My daughter, what are you saying? You must know that when the creature loves us, if we did not love her, we would act against the nature of our divine being. To be loved and not to love is not of the Supreme Being. And if this could be, and we were capable of pain, the love of the creature would put us into a life imprisonment of torments and would become our persecutor nor would it give us peace until fused together the love of one and of the other would kiss and rest together. Ah, oh, you do not know what it means to love and not to be loved by he or she whom one loves. All the pain, the restlessness, is carried by the one who does not love because the one who loves is at his place and fulfills the most sacrosanct of duties. In such state is our divine being, 
because we love too much, and man does not love us. Our love persecutes he whom we love. It puts him into life imprisonment. It torments him. It gives him no peace. Restlessness is the sure sign that the creature has been aimed at by our love, that wants to win the love of the creature by dint of persecution. Therefore, calm yourself. If you love us, our love loves you before you do. And the inseparability of our love and yours is so great that yours forms the little heat, and ours, feeding yours, forms the immensity of the light in such a way that both one and the other lose the separative virtue and live always together as if they were one single nature, to form one the life of the other. Therefore, if my speaking is not continuous, this does not mean broken love. No, it would be interrupted if you did not feel like wanting to do my will, even at the cost of your life. This would be no longer having it in your power. And if my goodness has reached such extent as to give it in your power, this assures you that my love for you is continuous. In fact, you must know that one who does and lives in my divine will is nothing other than the operating life of God himself in the creature. Our love for one who lets herself be dominated by our divine will is so great as to make itself her sweet prisoner. It restricts itself. It makes itself small and takes a most great delight to love and to operate in her soul. But while it restricts itself, it remains immense and operates with infinite ways, just as we love and operate within ourselves. Because that is our nature, immensity, infinity. And everything we do remains immense and infinite as we are. And oh, our contentment, for while we restrict ourselves in her littleness, we give course to our love and works. And she remains filled, overflows outside, fills heaven and earth. And we have the great glory and honor of loving and operating as God in her littleness. And if you knew what even just one act of love means, one work alone done by us in you, you would die of joy, and the whole of eternity would not be enough for you to thank us for a good so great. Therefore let me do, let me do what I want with you, and be certain that both you and I shall remain content. Fiat. July 14th, 1932. Celestial Atmosphere. Jesus, guarding the act of the creature. Work of one and of the other. How the acts done in the divine will guard and embrace the centuries and are the sentries and sentinels of the creatures. I am always occupied with and in the divine volition. In it, there is always work to do. But it is not a work that tires. No, rather it gives strength. It makes the divine life grow. 
and inundates one with joy, with peace. One feels a celestial atmosphere inside and out. But while I was swimming in the eternal waves of the divine volition, my highest good, Jesus, visiting my little soul, told me, Blessed daughter, it is I who form the celestial atmosphere inside and outside the creature. In fact, as soon as she enters into my divine will, I place myself as guard of the act that she is doing, and she forms the soil with her acts, and I form the divine seed to cast it into the act of the creature. So her acts serve as soil, and I, celestial farmer, by filling her with my seeds, use this in order to reap the harvest of the works that are done in my will. Do you see, then, what the continuation of the acts done in my divine will is for? It serves to give me the work and the occasion never to leave the creature, because she gives me always something to do, and I do not want to, nor can I leave a soil so precious, formed in my will, and exposed to the vivifying rays of the divine sun, empty. Therefore, my will calls you to work in it, and you call me, and oh, how sweet it is to work together in my fiat. It is a work that does not tire. On the contrary, it is bearer of rest and of the most beautiful conquests. And then he added, My daughter, you must know that our acts, which we do in the creature, contain three acts in one. The preserving act, the nourishing act, and the first creative act. With these three acts in one, we give perennial life to our acts, and the creature who possesses them feels within herself the creative power, which removes from her all the weaknesses of the human nature. The nourishing one keeps her always occupied giving her its food to prevent her from taking any other food and preserves her from all evils. This nourishment is like the embalming that prevents corruption, and the preserving act strengthens and keeps the good pure and beautiful. These are three acts in one are like impregnable fortresses that we give to the creature who lets our will reign in her, which render her so fortified that no one can harm her. After this, my little mind continued my round in the divine will, searching for its acts in order to enclose my acts within its own and make them one. This is all the contentment of my long exile, to be able to operate together with the supreme volition, to make my acts disappear in its own. I feel I take heaven as though in my power. I feel the eternal beatitudes flow in them. There is a footnote here referencing them, meaning my acts, Louisa's acts. I'll begin at the previous sentence. This is all the contentment of my long exile, to be able to operate together with the supreme volition, to make my acts disappear in its own. 
I feel I take heaven as though in my power. I feel the eternal beatitudes flow in them, my acts, in such a way that I feel neither distant nor estranged from my dear celestial fatherland. So, while my mind was as though crowded by thoughts on the divine will, my highest good Jesus, repeating his short little visit, told me, My little daughter of my will, I want you to know that for each of your acts in it, you are regenerated and grow as many times in a completely new way in our fiat. So, you feel heaven, and the Supreme Being has the great contentment of regenerating in the act of the creature. To form our life in her act is our feast, our longing. We unite all our stratagems of love and receive the complete glory that the creature can give us. Now, you must know that sacrifice, with powerful voice, calls God. And doing our will makes him descend into the soul to let him operate as the God he is. And I, my love, even though I try to operate always in your will, and I pray and pray that its kingdom come upon earth. Nothing is seen yet. And Jesus, good daughter, this says nothing. In fact, you must know that the prayers, the acts done in our will, because they enter our divine act, have such power that they must bring to the creatures the good they contain. They place themselves as guards of the centuries, and they guard them with so much love. And with unconquered patience, they wait and wait. And with the light that they possess, they knock at the hearts. They make themselves light for the minds. And without ever tiring, because they are not subject either to tiredness or to diminution of power. They act as sentries, as faithful sentinels, who do not leave other than when they have given the good that they possess. These acts are the possessors of my will, and in an absolute way they want to give it to creatures. And if one escapes them, they take aim at another. If one century does not receive them, they do not stop, nor do they depart, because we have given them the centuries in their power, and they form, and will form, our divine army in the midst of the human generations to form the kingdom of our will. In these acts, there is the human crowned with divine power, and they give to the creatures the right to possess such a kingdom. There is our will operating in these acts, and it gives God the right to reign and dominate the creature with our omnipotent fiat. They are like the down payment and capital that pay God on behalf of creatures and have the right to give what they have paid for to the human generations. And like sun that does not withdraw or ever tire of beating on the earth with its light to give the goods it possesses, so do they, more than suns, go around through each heart go around the centuries, are always in motion, nor do they ever give up.
until they have given my operating will which they possess. More so, since they know with certainty that they will obtain their intent and victory. Therefore, if you see nothing, do not be concerned. You continue your life and your acts in my will. And this is more necessary than anything. To form the currency, in order to pay for a kingdom so holy on behalf of your brothers. And besides, you must know that my very life spent on earth and my own acts find themselves in the same condition. I paid up for all, and my life and what I did is at everyone's disposal and want to give themselves in order to give the good they possess. And although I departed for heaven, I left and I stayed to go around the hearts, the centuries, so as to give to all the good of my redemption. It has been about twenty centuries and my life and my acts continue to go around. But not all of them have been taken by creatures, so much so that various regions still do not know me. So my life, the fullness of my goods and my acts, do not withdraw. They run and go around always. They embrace the centuries as the one to give to all the good that they possess. Therefore, it is necessary to do, to pay, to form the capital. The rest shall come by itself. So be attentive and let your flight in my fiat be continuous. Fiat. Deo gratias. You have reached the end of the Book of Heaven, Volume 30. Fiat. Dearest Lord Jesus, I thank you for your lessons of today. Free me from living one single instant outside of your will. Have pity on me and do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will. Fiat et Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.